Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am Guillermo Varela from McNeil Europe, and I'm here with Antoine Mais. He is the lead computational designer at A2M Architecture in Brussels. Also, he is a computational design consultant and Grasshopper teacher at the University of Leeds. And he is also the co-developer of the Grasshopper plugin Tapeworm. And today, he will show us some ways of animating different objects and basic behaviors in Grasshopper. We will see a way of animating multiple actions from one slider only. He has prepared some example files to, say, to share with you, and I will copy the link to download them in the chat in a moment. Remember that in the last 15 minutes of this webinar, we will have some time for Q&A, so you can ask questions for Ant Antoine in the chat, and we will check them at the end. Also, I would like to mention that the webinar is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel, where you can find more webinars and tutorials. So thank you so much, Antoine, for accepting our invitation. And please start the presentation if you're ready. Yeah, hi. Uh, first of all, thank you to you uh, for inviting me. It wasn't expected, and I'm, I'm really happy for it. Uh, and uh, thank you to all of you for joining. Uh, I hope you'll find something interesting um, in this presentation. So we have quite a, a long... Uh, Presentation, I think, ahead of us. So let's uh, start and uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And we have a little chat after if you have questions. Um, so grasshopper animations. So yeah, this is a small animation I made that I'm for this presentation. Um, we will see a little bit how this one works a bit later. Uh, and this is today's menu. First, we're gonna speak a little bit about what I do um, really shortly. Um, then we'll see previous animations, some behind the scenes of uh, what's happening in those animations. And we will also cover some code example like uh, Grasshopper files uh, that highlight some of the key concepts of those animations. Um, third part will be showing you the multi-clip animation. What I call multi-clip animation is animations that happen successively. Uh, but are part of one animation. So it means that you just move one slider and um, multiple clips will happen one after the other. Um, and then on the last part, we will actually uh, dive into one. Uh, it's also one that I share with you. Um, and uh, we will also run the animation and I will show what you can do with Tapeworm, um, the plugin Tapeworm. Um, so let's go ahead. First part, current work. Oh, it disappeared. Okay. So I work um, as a computational designer at uh, A2M Architecture. It's an architecture office in Brussels, uh, specialized in a passive building and zero to very low energy building. Um, and so my work there is uh, project specific definitions, but also tools. Um, automate some parts, or in this case, to visualize some data. Uh, this is a tool uh, that basically allows you to create these. Uh, I don't know if we see my mouse. We don't see my mouse. Yes. Um, we see it? Great. Um, thank you. And so create these uh, scientific like uh, graphics uh, from Grasshopper. So it runs with hops. So it's a C Python script in hops, using hops. Um, and then, for example, here we have a very generic and very ugly uh, city example, right? And um, we run a bunch of analysis on it. And uh, here is one graph that uh, we plot just for the example. And we can compare project zero to project one and see that, for example, project uh, one has more views, has better ranking for the views compared and, and less radiation compared to project zero. So in low energy building, and I think even for every building, it's usually what you're looking for. Uh, so yeah, this is how it runs in the background, just regular data trees. Uh, in the background, it uses data frames, and then it, it uh, creates these uh, graphs. The workflow is pretty simple, I would say. Um, so basically here, all the data in the data trees, we convert it to a data frame and there we plot it. And this one will change whatever type of plot you select uh, here above. 
these are some examples of the plots that we can create with that. Um, and there are a lot more. So the original release, I've posted it on my GitHub. Um, you can have it, uh, a look here. I let this screen for you to screen if you want. Um, but there's been an updated version of, of, uh, of the one I've posted uh, by uh, Juan Pablo Arango. I hope I did it right. Um, so the, the link here under is an updated version with uh, like more tweaks on the, on the aesthetics of the, of the graphs, uh, but also it allows the plugin to scale more. So it avoids some limitation hops has, and uh, so it's better for further developments. So go have a check at this if you're interested. Uh, second project and last one I will show you, it's the one I'm currently working on, a really funny project actually. Uh, so imagine you have like a volume of uh, a maximum volume of uh, construction. So you can create a project inside of that volume only. And so it's represented here as uh, blocks. And uh, the reason for that is that the project is basically uh, um, groups of blocks uh, that are part of a grid like this. Uh, and so groups of blocks will create apartments. And so the project is, is like, you can basically uh, add more blocks to an apartment to change uh, the apartment. So it's a project that can evolve with time. Like let's say 10 years after the construction, we could potentially in, um, add more apartments if we increase the volume, or we could even change some apartments by, by adding some uh, or removing some uh, blocks from them. So here, a quick example. Again, it runs with, uh, with hops. So it's uh, like graph theory and it works directly inside of hops in Grasshopper. And so here we have a, a black, it's uh, circulations. And then you see uh, three in this case apartment uh, being suggested. And then you can move and see plenty of different uh, configurations. There are plenty of settings, for example, proportions of sizes of apartments. So you can have 30% of, uh, let's say five blocks and 30%, 70% of uh, four blocks, for example. Uh, it can go with different heights. And then you can have also only flat apartments, duplexes, tri uh, triplex, triplex, triplex. And all of that has, uh, is receiving also rankings so that um, we can evaluate the results. Um, here is a small animation of actually the, the plugin in action. So we have uh, here a bunch of uh, circulations that we move around and you have these uh, graphs that are being uh, generated. Uh, bear in mind that in each frame here, like we test in this case, uh, on average 50,000 apartments, um, but technically there is almost an infinity amount of apartments that we can create from each frame. Uh, so that's a really, Tough but really funny, uh, uh, yeah, project to work on. Um, so yeah, from the circulations only, we create the, the blocks. So that was it. That's for what I do. Let's go with animation since it's the topic of today. Um, all right. So first of all, when I finished uni, uh, I started working in Brussels, and I come from Liège, which is. Uh, it like gave me two hours of train a day. Um, and so I was kind of bored. I decided to install Instagram, uh, scrolling, scrolling, great. And then I found this guy who is doing crazy good animations. Um, have a look, is insane. And then I wondered, uh, what if we could do that in Grasshopper? So that was me the next day. Um, and uh, there we go, first animation ever. So this is already a bit of the background of it, uh, as you can see, but this is how it looked. So it looks kind of simple. Uh, it actually is not uh, because I overcomplicated it way too hard. For example, here you see things moving and things that are static, right? What's happening in the background is that it's actually the opposite. Um, I don't know why I made the camera moving. And so 
in my head it needed to move and so the things that were moving in the animations are static and the, and the opposite for the rest terrible idea anyway what i want to show you here now is uh how i created for example this um balancing behavior because it's not a, like a simulation whatsoever it's just a bunch of points and then we select through them as you can see here the green mark the green point we just select basically one point with a current uh, constant speed on the slider with the animate function and uh, it builds the sphere and it creates this so first this was what i did in the code so these files you will receive huh? uh, they will be in the links as uh, dermo told you and um, so this was the initial way of doing but if you look uh, from the front you see that it's actually not even close to be correct right so i didn't want to show you that one for today uh, this is a more a better approach so just we create circle we get the bottom of the circle here we have a subdomain of a curve so we can just adjust the the two ends of the curve you can see here in the green line and then here we will populate this we will evaluate this curve basically with a, a range so we will have here a hundred and one point but we use a sinus function so that it will basically the points will be closer to each other on the edges on the end of the curve and more spread apart in the middle right? you can have another function there that would even be closer to, to real life um oh there we go and after that uh basically we add some x value here you can see when we construct the points we add some x uh, values and so after that we basically just select through them and we have this effect happening all right in the same concept this was uh, let's say the first uh, actually the first animation when i started to enjoy <laughs> it was really uh, started to be more interesting let's say so the same concept nothing really new here but this one was a lot better made made better and so we can have some different values that will create different animations so this one is particularly not beautiful to me but uh, yeah see all this is the same code i just run the slider with different settings and uh, this is what is happening um so a lot of time with this animation i start with drawings uh, i mean it was in the train as well but drawings and then start building these um, prototypes uh, that just illustrate the concept and then i realize why it will not work and then i adjust and then all the all, like any regular project basically um and so this is uh what the results of that one uh, i have no idea what's that um i guess it's kind of satisfying to see this marble going through but yeah i have no no clue what it is uh yeah so this is a bit of a series, like a recurrent topic, let's say, in animations is a uh, roller coaster like uh, sculptures, let's call them that way, uh, where we have here uh, plenty of rollers going down uh, some sort of uh, rails. And uh, they appear to be random, they are, but it's also looped at the end uh, if you let it go through. What's happening in the background is again some regular thing happening so plenty of points and i just select through them i create planes so i select through the planes i put the geometry onto the planes that i selected and so these where the uh, roller appear and then really at the end of the process i create the 3d geometries with the uh, pipes and here we have created this wheel, so we create it separately and then we uh, orient it onto the correct plane. So here it's what's happening um, in the background. Uh, so this one is a bit 
really specific to that animation. It was a bit too long to put the whole animation and cover it. So I give this one to you. I have made some comments so that you can uh, read and understand what's happening. But we're gonna cover something a little bit different but that does the same is creating the fake gravity effect. So we have here a closed curve. And as you can see, the marble is appearing to go faster when it's uh, lower in this animation and uh, slower on the top here and medium speed in the middle, right? So first of all, uh, here I just have a small, let's say, setup where I create a knob curve randomly so that you can change it yourself. You can um, make plenty of different uh, curves and you will see that uh, the effect still works in most cases, let's say. Um, all right, after that, we simply evaluate that curve um, at a fixed step. So we just ask for a number of points. Uh, and then here, it's a bit, you notice here, I've also let notes to explain exactly what's happening. But basically, based on the height of the point, we will just say, OK, the next point to evaluate is a bit further or a bit closer. Um, yeah, basically, that's it. So if you are, if the point that is evaluated is really high, then we say, OK, the next point that you evaluate is uh, closer to us. If you are on the bottom, it means that it has to be higher. And so you have also the possibility to adjust, to basically shift the point. And you can see there are groups of points here that are moving around. So this is for you to adjust the gravity, to set it right at the top, because sometimes it can slide a bit on the sides. And stuff. Here is a quick display for you to see uh, the gravity in action. You can also run an optimization on it if you want. It's uh, a bit silly, but uh, if we are lazy sometimes, we can do that. And so this is the, when you animate this slider, the big round one, uh, this is what happens, right? So we are just selecting, selecting through the points and creating a sphere on that point again. So there's nothing else happening. Here, another prototype that I uh, thought would be interesting to show. Uh, so it's the first time I started to play with the uh, tricks of perspective. So we are in, uh, in the isometric views now. And um, yeah, basically, we have the impression that these two half circles are touching when the marble comes by, but actually, they are never touching. It's just a camera aligning itself properly. This is the result of that one. Um, again, so you'll see here it transferred to the other one. So. We don't see a jump in the geometry itself, but we see the jump in the uh, shadow, obviously. Uh, that's something I liked. That's something a lot of people disliked. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're not magicians. At some point, the geometry is far and then it's close. So between two frames, you have this jump of shadow happening. Uh, quickly after, I wanted to combine these two. And so this is something that came up right after. Uh, so again, a bit roller coaster, and a small train going by. And so basically, it seems again like the rails are moving to touch each other at the right time. But what's happening is uh, just the camera moving and orienting itself properly uh, so that it appears to be touching, but it is not. Uh, all right. So here is what I just explained, basically. I should have shown this one. Basically, you can see that while the train is on a track, the camera is moving to align itself somewhere else. And when the camera stops, it means it's properly aligned. And then the train can transfer. And basically, you will not notice it un unless you look at the shadows and stuff like that. But the geometry itself will appear to be really smooth transitioning. Uh, totally different, totally different uh, file. There is a here again first concept. I don't really know where I go with this. And then this is where the concept kicks in when we have something to work with. And this is 
uh, results of it. So it's basically just the wheel rolling uh, that is made of different um, radiuses. And so the floors have to go at different speeds, right? Because the perimeter it will be bigger for the same uh, rotation tick, let's say. Uh, and so you can also just change some settings and it goes crazy like this. Uh, but yeah, you can see on the side that it, it still uh, meets the criteria of rolling. Like it basically touches always at one point on this. I mean, two points because it has to be balanced. It has to roll as a, as a block. Um, all right. This is uh, one of my favorite, let's say. Uh, this is part actually of a collaboration with um, someone I met on. So uh, uh, just quickly, these two questions are actually good to answer right now. So before these animations, I was doing uh, only with a uh, Rhino. So it's uh, not even like it's the Rhino viewport, the render viewport, sorry. So you can just select on Rhino in the, small view menu and you have a rendered viewport and that's it. Uh, and here is the first time I tested um, V-Ray for Grasshopper. And so they go really well together. You can create your animation completely as you would do for Rhino. And then you can just set the materials and the geometry and the lighting with V-Ray. You can render frames, you can render animations, you can render on the cloud, it's a little bit expensive, but you can, you can, you can, uh, <laughs> it works well. So yeah, this is upgrade for renderings. And uh, I don't use Kangaroo for these scripts, but if we can come back to that question later after the presentation. If you want. So this is um, a collaboration I was saying with a guy I met on Instagram that wanted to do sound design. And so I'm going to play this one with sound. I'm going to Lower this. So there you go. It's the same uh, concept of uh, geometry jumping from one place to another. So what I like is that we have still the jump. That's also part of the sound design, which is something we didn't discuss turned out really great. And so since those animations with the uh, camera tricks are often subject to questions, I wanted to show this uh, with a little code example that you can have and can play with. So this is a much simpler um, model because the speed is constant. In the other ones, the speed were accelerating. So there is a lot more to check for uh, in terms of uh, camera alignment at the right time. Um, and so, yeah, let's go ahead and dive into it. And we can have also, if you have questions even for these scripts after the presentation, I'd be glad to answer. So feel free to, to ask. Here we have a simple, so the first part here is the, again, a setup. Uh, and then we will discuss like really the parts of the animation. So the setup here is just a circle and then that we divide in two. And then we have here three groups basically to move uh, the red circle in some direction. You can see here, there's the world axis. Um, so basically we want always the red circle to move away, let's say like this, away from the black circle. Uh, and then it can move above, under, left, right, but always away from it. And here you can have, uh, you have different values that you can change. You will see that the animation still works. For the ones who are really curious about this away constraint, uh, just try to make it the other way. You'll see the animation will still run, but you will have really weird visual, um, visual stuff that will be funny. It will not, illusion will not work, but the animation will. Anyway, so after that, let's start uh, to speak about cameras and stuff. So we are now in, these tricks only work in um, axonometric views. So 
it's always a bit tricky to know how camera work in uh, isometric views. Basically, what I do most of the time is try to aim for the center of the of the scene, right? Uh, here, really easy, it's kind of symmetric. We want to use the center of it. We just take the four endpoints and we get an average of these points. We have the center. Okay, so that's the target for the camera. Then we check for where the transfer is, like where the ring has to transfer to, right? And we use that basically to position the camera. For example, here I take the center, which is the target, and I move it in that, I move it in this direction, the same direction as here above. And this is the location of my camera. And if I put the camera there and I look at the target down here, the it, the two half circle ap will appear to be connected. Okay. Um, so like this. And then from here, like this group, we will create a small circle that will be basically the movement of the camera. The camera will move around this circle, but always aim down to this target. And so it will create this movement where the ring crosses, it jumps between the two half circle, and then the camera moves away so that you see that the geometry are not connected actually, and then it comes back to place. And so this is what's happening in the background. So you can see as the moment that these two arrows are basically Overlapping, it means that we are aligned with the circles. Um, yeah, again, here we are using a sinus. So it's just to have this motion of the camera that will uh, accel accelerate slowly and then go fast and then go back and slow again before stopping. Not like uh, going instantly to moving and then stop abruptly or something. And then when you just create the geometries here, I, I've also given you some, this is also part of the questions about uh, renders. Uh, here I've put some two components, is, uh, they are the same component uh, that create uh, material. So it looks a bit better uh, already. Uh, this actually has been posted by David Britton and uh, it's on the forum somewhere. So there you go, you have it here. Uh, another series I've made uh, that uh, people liked, I think, uh, this was one of my uh, animations that uh, I've had the most returns on, uh, are marbles. It's marbles really also recurrent uh, topic uh, where there's like this avoidance of the blocks, but also like avoidance of the marbles together, which is a bit intriguing. Can see and so for example this one here under you can see that also the size of the marble have different influence on the blocks and so this actually have made a script for cd next uh, five um and so i decided to give it to you here as well it's a uh, quite uh more complex than all the other scripts that you will have today obviously um there are plenty of notes read the groups they are also uh, telling a little bit what's happening inside. Um, yeah, and again, if you have questions about it, you can ask, I uh, can help you. There are, there's one file with V-Ray and one without. Uh, they both run. And uh, here we have also a small optimization uh, to find uh, basically path for the marbles to not hit each other, okay? So yeah, it was a lot more tricky than expected, but this part will do that, this pink part. Here is a complete different uh, topic, is uh, something that I've wanted to do for quite a long time and I had a few tries but didn't manage to do it. Basically it's endless zooming. This was for 2K on Instagram. Uh, but uh, the topic of zooming is uh, the interesting part of this. And so remember that we are in axonometric, uh, isometric view. Axonometric. Um, and so basically, you cannot really zoom uh, with those kind of cameras. Uh, V-Ray has something to zoom but it's in these cameras, but it's really tricky to, to 
to use. I don't really make, it doesn't really make sense to me, that one, that setting. And so here what's happening in reality is that instead of camera zooming is the geometry that is scaling up, right? So here there is a two step. Basically, first I generate a bunch of geometry in a loop. I use Anemon for this one to create the geometry smaller and smaller, always on top of each other like this. And then I do the animation where there is one step we turn so that we see two and then K. And then after that, there is the bigger circle where we transition basically to the next animation. So the red one here is scale and then it goes down to avoid being again in the passing in the, in the front of the camera, right? Because if you zoom endlessly, you will always have this um, two coming by in front again of the camera. So I decided to make it go low as quickly as possible. If you make it disappear, you will see jumps in, uh, in shadows, lighting, and stuff like that. So, and this is my favorite of all. I'm going to let it run. You see if you see any problems with it. Um, Basically here, the square ring is black when you look at it now. Then you let it do the geometry and you see that now it's white. Okay, so that's the, that's the trick of that animation. Um, there is no jump in this one. It's uh, another trick. <laughs> it's another trick um, where I'm gonna show you the ones that don't want, please look away. But this is a <clears throat> actually, so the geometry is more like a Mobius. Right, and the illusion comes just from the fact that the square ring is rotating differently when it goes up and then when it goes down. So you can see it will rotate like this when it goes up, and then it will rotate other on another axis when it goes down. So that's how that's how the effect is. Uh, This was, uh, this is, I believe, the late, the last animation, sim simple animation we will cover. This is actually the most, one of the most, no, the most complicated I've made. It was for a workshop with Design Morphine. Um, I just want to go through some steps so that you see just the process. Um, the code is pretty long, so we will absolutely not go in detail in it. Um, just so that you, you can see. So we will focus on the right one. So what's happening, I'm going to stop these ones because. So what's happening again, it's a glider, like this piece of uh, rings, uh, white rings that go down uh, these rails, right? But you can notice in that animation, they are also like backgrounds, uh, background structures, right? And so they appear to be a bit random. You can see the rails connecting, but actually these structures in the background, at one point in the animation, they become part of the structure. Again, with this trick of a camera position. So for one camera position, basically these structure become part of the sculpture. That makes sense. So this is the script. So it's by far the longest I've made for an animation. Even for my regular work is one of the longest. And these are some of the topics, um, so I'm just going to go really quickly through because I think it's a bit uh, out of, not out of topic, but you can see how it goes, but we cannot really dive in details. It's, it was more than nine hour workshop, so, and I didn't even have enough time. So yeah, first we create like the rails, we have uh, some sort of curve that goes down a cylinder, let's say. Uh, Spring, and then you have this other one that basically rotates around as it goes down. Then we divide it in X number of groups. Here we decided to have four. We have settings to change that. You can see that there are also different lengths. There are long ones, and there are, the blue one here is very small, for example. The green one is medium. Then we create this fake gravity effect uh, that will be used with. Uh, the number like will dictate basically the number of points that we put on this curve. So where it was red, we put more planes. When it is blue, we put less um, planes. 
So this will have this effect gravity, as you can see here, when uh, we start playing basically the slider that will animate the animation, that will create the animation. You can notice here that basically already between the yellow and the red, they are connected. So the camera that we are using in this specific GIF is um, already aligned for one transition. After that, these, <clears throat> these plane here that I select uh, are used to place the geometry onto them. So in the center of Rhino, basically, usually I create the geometry of the things that move and stuff like that. If it's a bit complex design as well, I do like that. And then we place them with an orient object on it. So origin plane, target plane, and you put the geometry and it goes. Uh, here in the yellow part here under, we are setting up the camera. So once again, we are using the arrows here are basically all the connection, the direction of the connections between the rails. So between yellow, red, between red, blue, between blue and green, and green and yellow. And then we have this, uh, we create this target curve, I call, let's, let's call it that way. And the camera has to align in this direction of these arrows when the glider comes, like is about to jump. It's a bit, really a bit complicated to explain this quickly. Um, I hope it makes sense. After that, this is where it gets uh, completely crazy and uh, overcomplicated. Basically, we use these four uh, directions. So now we will create the, the structures, right? the structures that will appear to be connected in one direction. We have these four directions that represent the four jumps that the glider has to do every time. And we move all the green planes here with all of these false uh, vectors. And so this creates this cloud of planes. Then you can create some basic structures, like basic uh, lines out of it. Um, and uh, after that, we can select, we can filter through all the geometry that has been made. Um, in this definition, like everything has been really tightly organized in data trees so that you can really filter it super fast. Um, basically, you, in the end, you can really select, depending on the number of groups of colors you've made, it will tell you, okay, you have five views or three views, uh, which one you want this trick to be on. So if you want it for view number one, then it will only display the structures that are for view one, um, that will, that will uh, connect on view one, or you can select another view if you want. And so, yeah, that's, um, that's it for that one. And then after that, the V-Ray really happens at the end. Um, I'm not really a render guy, so. I'm always playing a little bit like I don't really know what I'm, what I'm doing, but uh, it's quite easy to make something that looks decent, I guess. Um, and so these are some screens I made with that. Again, different types of structure for the one in the middle, no structure for the one on the left. And so on the right, uh, again, it's just on one view, this happens. Um, everything seems to be aligned. All right. so. Multi-clip animations. I will quickly cover what I've done in multi-clip animations, and then we will jump into, into one, okay? Um, so multi-clip animations as of, where is it? Okay. So here under you have the animations, one animation that I showed you before, so nothing new. And uh, at some point, on Instagram, I published this type of animation where I basically explain, try to explain how this is made, how the one on the bottom left is main, made, right? So you can see all these uh, things happy, appearing and building up, and then we do pipes, and then we do pipes, then we put material, and then we blah, blah, blah. Excuse me for the, uh, pardon me for these uh, colors, I was young. 
but uh, yeah, so basically multi-clip animation, every, like, every step is one clip, I call it, let's say. Uh, all right, so this is the, uh, just, I want to show this because uh, it's a bit nonsense. So this is the code for this animation. Uh, it's a terrible code, as you can see, it looks really ugly. No one should ever code like this. But when you want to do a uh, multi-clip animation out of the first animation, it becomes a complete nonsense. Um, and so, yeah, it's a bit ridiculous uh, some of the time. If you plan to do it uh, from the get-go, then it's fine. If you want to apply it on an existing definition, uh, good luck. It's uh, really tricky. OK, next, um, cannot play media. You can play media. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So, um, yes, another multi-clip animation. Let's go. So these are the, let's say this one shows how to create rails like this. So it explains like one plane, circle A, circle B, and then one rotates around it. One plane, the other one rotates with the other circle, basically. And so with some values here under, you can create these rails. And then if you have many different, like here, different examples of different values. And so again, this is just one slider. This is the animation people love the most. This is the most, uh, most return out of this one. And then I made another one that illustrates how, oh, there we go. Um, how I put the geometry onto the, onto the rails. So in this case, I create just one uh, wheel here. It's a bit slow. Let's, uh, let's watch it. So we create the geometry. Okay, great. Put the texture. And then we have the plane that comes from the center of the origin that is evaluated on the curve every time. And we put that geometry from the center to the rails. And then here I decided to create the pipes in place. That's uh, one way to go. Again, weird colors, weird color choice, but that's it. And then what I also liked is that trying to go back to the origin of the video so that also these videos are looked right. Uh, okay, so this is a remix of the white animation with the sun I put you. So it's the same basically with V-Ray as well. And here is one animation that explains how it works. So you have two half circles, then you have the arrows for, to see the transition. You see the gravity effect, less points, then we make a lot of points. We get the center of the camera. We use the connections for where the camera has to look from at the right time. And then we start putting all the geometries. Um, we use also these vectors now to build also the structure that go at one point and another. And then we go back to the position and we reset everything. So we deconstruct all the geometries and we can start over. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so, as I said, so actually the animation I've made for today, the script is a bit more advanced. Uh, upgraded, let's say, that than the one that um, I'm showing here, but let's say the concept is the same, right? We have two texts. We map them on a sphere, like from a plane on a sphere, and then we extrude the geometry and we get what's inside of their geometry. We use meshes, otherwise it's impossible almost to compute. And then we go from week to end for weekend. and um, when we go from week to end, the geometry stays the same. But once we go from end to week, basically restarting the, the word, then the geometry changes because the word moves around on the sphere. And then once again, we deconstruct everything. Um, all right, so this is, I, I have no idea how, how long time I am right now. Okay, 45. I'm just gonna show quickly. So this is the last part that we're gonna cover. Um, 
I'm going to just run the animation. So multi-clip code example. So for the ones that have been at uh, CDNX5, you have seen this already. It's a um, script. So multi-clip animation, once again, see there is one animation here. We uh, create the bottom curve, and then we create the volume of the project, let's say, and then we move the camera. This happens like me here. There's just one slider, and we create all this. So this is not the one. So as you can see, this is the file that you received with a balancing example, uh, fake gravity, and then here the camera alignment. Uh, the last one here. So this is the code uh, for the multi-clip animation. Um, yeah, let's move this. Where is the camera here? Also, like most of the animations that you've seen, I tried to do them vanilla grasshopper, right? Less amount, the least amount of plugin possible, but sometimes plugins are really great. So here, for example, for cameras, I'm using here really small uh, custom script. There's two lines of code basically, but um, I use usually Heteroptera, Heteroptera uh, plugin, which has a, a far more robust camera that you can also twist and many angle. So that's uh, usually great. So <clears throat> let's cover this um, a bit and then uh, dive uh, into it. So we have uh, black, let's start with the black groups here. Uh, this is just to create this uh, city. Once again, great city looking absolutely fabulous. Um, and then what we have in blue, in the groups, the blue groups is what will dr uh, drive the animation, okay? So we will have, uh, for example, the length of the clips that we want them to last on the video. For example, one second, one second, and then three seconds. Uh, the number of frames, the number of frames to create the animation slider. And then here, how you want the effect to uh, evolve over time. So again, we're using these um, sinus-like um, function uh, to have uh, like smooth uh, movement, like start slowly, then go fast, and then slows again before stopping. Uh, and in the right white groups here, we are basically using what comes from the the let's say animate the the, the clips uh, movement the, yeah a bit complicated to explain but basically we create the geometry or move geometries from those uh, values in, that come out of the blue groups in the red down here it's tapeworm uh, we will cover that just after it's really short and you'll see how to create GIFs or MP4s uh, directly from, from it. Okay, so I will cover here the blue and the white a little bit. The black one we don't need at all. So here, basically, we have one, we have one slider that we will move from zero to one. What we want to do is to divide this a domain that goes from zero to one into three different subdomains. Uh, we want a domain where when we move the slider, it will draw a line, the line of the project, and then it will extrude the project, and then it will move the camera, right? So with these uh, small components here, what we create in the end is basically that. We have three domains. That first one goes from 0, zero to 0 0.2, then 0 0.2 to Four and then four to, to one. So you can see that these uh, basically come from these inputs, right? So here you have, if they are all the same length, uh, you would have different domains. Here we simply explode the tree because we need all the different ones. And um, what we do here is basically with these this one with the remap slider, we say, okay, we want this, you can actually look here in the graphs. Um, 
from these uh, domains, let's put it here so that I can explain to you. We want this function to be evaluated, right? When the slider is between zero to 0 0.2. So as I animate this slider, I move here this slider from zero to 0 0.2, you can see that we are evaluating this curve. As soon as I jump above 0 0.2, you see that we are evaluating the next curve. Okay. And then as we go above, this one is 0 0.4. This is the maximum. As we go above 0 0.4, we start evaluating the third one. So that is how it works. And if you want to add more, you can just add like this, and then you would have to match output. You have a new one. This is a new domain, and you would have to create this and link it to another um, movement or geometry creation or whatever. You can have like the windows coming, power twisting. Really, it's up to you. Um, so once again, let's go back here in the values that are in the first function. We are here basically evaluating a curve that is go way up, that is um, the base of the of the building. And so we are constructing this. And then in the second uh, part of the animation, we are extruding here, extrude, building the mani magnificent project. We are extruding this curve that we have made a surface. And then after that, we are basically just displaying the edges, the curves. But you can see that this one, this second animation, also has something to do with the camera. So I will activate the camera so that you can see. Basically, we create the curve and then second animation, we extrude, but we have also the camera going up because we are aiming for the center of the project. So in, in one of the animation, basically we have two motions in one go. Uh, and then we have the camera movement. Camera movement should not be any surprise for you now. This is just one point that we look at and one point we look from, and this is how we make camera. We have to activate it here, obviously. Uh, I hope I didn't make a mess of this explanation. Again, uh, let me know. Uh, you can contact me for that. I'm going to just quickly run this. It's going to be really, really fast. Um, so here, down here, I have a folder I've created somewhere on my computer where I will create the frames. And then I will uh, refer, like I will tell Tapeworm where are the frames for the animations, for the animation. So to create the animation, when you have everything set up like this, for the ones who don't know, something I should maybe have covered before, you can right click on the slider and create animate. Oh, uh, you can hear me? Oh, it's just a... Uh... Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I don't know if someone else has a problem. Okay, okay, great. Um, so here again, the definition is telling you the number of frames, uh, the number of images you have to create, uh, depending on the number of frames per second you want in the animation. Right? It's a really simple calculation. Uh, yeah. Um, keep in mind that for GIFs, the maximum frames that you can have that the GIF can have is 30 images per second. Um, yeah. For videos, you can go up to whatever you want. So here you right click, it, it tells you 150 frames, right? So you right click animate, you will have this that pops up. You go to the correct folder. In this case, it's already set up. Here, you match the perspective, the, the, side, the, the size of the viewport. You just click on that button. It's already clicked for me. And here, number of frames, I put 150. Great. So this is what you will see, basically, what's in this. Um, and then you click OK. And as you can see on the down right, it will 
start creating all these uh, things. You can see the slider is moving and the animation is like all the frames are being generated in the background. What we do once we have that, we go down here, tapeworm. Um, so we have just not a lot of component. This is it now. Um, we have IO, which uh, deal with uh, the frames, the input frames. Then you have a few settings here, frames. If you want to create GIFs from frames, video from the frames, if you want to convert a GIF to a video, et cetera. Uh, if you want to do that inside of Grasshopper, obviously. There are also some websites, but sometimes it's a lot faster to do here. For this example, uh, it's actually a lot faster, you'll see. So here we select, we have a file path component. We select, uh, selecting one existing file. This one is specific. We go to that specific folder where you put all the geometries. You select the first image. I think you can select any, but the best is to select the first one. Here, it still raises a warning. It's not really relevant anymore. It's something that we should maybe uh, change, but we discovered a bug with Rhino back then uh, with some versions only. And so I think now it has been addressed and uh, fixed. Uh, so there we go. This is all what we need for this animation, basically. These are um, like um, default values. These are the settings. And then we have the head here will, that will create the uh, video. Bear in mind that it runs with a, a software that you have to download. Uh, we'll also put the video of the installation tutorial. It's quite easy to, to install. It's just a bit different than, than the other plugins. Uh, basically, you just have to download one file. Uh, that is really, a, a, like, don't, be, don't be scared. It's a trusted uh, tool that Netflix, use, Netflix uses, Twitch uses, and everything. Um, and you just have to put it on your computer somewhere. and. Uh, the component here will find it. The name of the plugin is Tapeworm. Tapeworm. So it has tape. So that's because we do video. And then that's it. That was the only name. Great. Thank you for the link. And so, yeah, building up to this moment where we will click on this. So let's see here. This is our folder with all the, the frames. I click here on the button. We will have some black frames here, black console popping off. Uh, it's fine as long as it's going. And here down there, you can see that there is already a GIF and there is also a palette that will be disappearing. Oh, it disappeared. And then you have the sample GIF here. You double click on it and you have your animation. And so these, also these uh, sub uh, clips, the clips one after the other run uh, the right length of what you have. If you want to make some changes, it's that easy here. Let's say you want this to be also three seconds. Do that, okay. Now it tells you, oh, 210 images, All right? The best here is to delete everything. Uh, let's actually do that. So I'm just gonna delete all the, all the frames. You animate this, this time you say, uh, not 150, like ev everything is basically, saved from the previous uh, animation you've made. So here you just have to change this to 210 frames. You say, okay, it runs. It will be a little bit longer, obviously. There's no frames. So we'll wait, and then we can already add back to this one. And so here I have it to overwrite. So basically it will rewrite above the previous GIF that we created. This doesn't change, it's the same file at the same place. I just click this, I have this popping up again. So for GIFs, you have two uh, windows like this popping on, and for the rest, you have only one. And then once this is finished, you will have the GIF with, oh, this is the frame, I went too quickly. And so now the extrusion, you can see it's a lot long, longer, like it's three seconds instead of one. So you can really have a workflow where you modify your project. If you have an animation that uh, runs onto a project, displays a project, show the concept or whatever, if you make some changes, you can basically 
uh, run the animation again and build the GIF in more time. Um, and uh, I think that's it. That's all I had to show for today. Once again, if you have questions for people also that are interested, I want to say that uh, I might, like I'm really considering doing uh, either Twitch or YouTube live uh, kind of content about Grasshopper, about scripting, about what I do, uh, or fun projects. Uh, so yeah, if you guys are interested, I will post it on my Instagram at some point if I, when, it, when I start doing that, so. It will be great. Thank you, Antoine, for the presentation. It has been great. Welcome, welcome. And it's also very interesting to see your your grasshopper definitions that are very organized and very clear, <laughs> not like the spaghetti that you show also. Yeah, yeah, I started with the spaghettis, but uh, it's impossible no, at some it, point. It's great to see all the groups with all the names, and it's very clear to follow, and I think the examples will help a lot to, so. to check also the, the presentation again. I see some questions that some of them you have answered, but as I was seeing that you have kangaroo open and we had one about that from Chen. Yes, there was one with, oh yeah, here. If you were using kangaroo in these scripts. Uh, so I've used, actually, I can even show one that I've made with a, yeah, it would be a bit tricky for me to find it because it's actually kind of lost on my computer. Um, it's uh, so kangaroo for these animations. I've never used kangaroo. Um, kangaroo is a crazy plugin, actually. I don't know it as much as I should. Um, <laughs> there's uh, plenty of stuff you can do. Uh, so there is actually a component with kangaroo where I saw that. I saw that. Let me show kangaroo. I think it's in kangaroo 2. Too many plugins. Here, you have this component there. This one allows you to have, uh, there is an animate input. And so when you've set all your simulation, you can have, for example, uh, again, what I suggest is to do uh, one slider that goes basically, uh, one, one slider that goes from zero to one, and that's the driver of the animation. And then you divide it if you need, or you multiply by the values you need. To, and so basically this, the, the any time this slider moves, change the value a little bit by any amount, it will create the next step in the simulation. And so you can animate stuff with Kangaroo with this. Um, and uh, otherwise, what I've been doing before this, before I heard about this, is uh, you can run Kangaroo normally, and then you get back all the data that, that comes from Kangaroo and you record it with a, a data, record this one. So you record all of it. Uh, it will be saved in branches as the step go. And then you will select through the branches to see the animation that you've simulated. It's a bit uh, less ideal, let's say. Um, but yeah, that's how I usually do when I deal with Kangaroo. Okay, thank you. We have another one from Marco Maric that is asking, how would you comment the Grasshopper animation potential versus Houdini animations, for example? Oof. I don't know if you have. Uh, I don't have experience in Houdini at all. Um, it looks amazing. Uh, actually, so first of all, something that uh, I think has to be a bit clear is that Grasshopper is not made for animations. It's not the main, uh, uh, yeah, uh, purpose of the, of the software, yeah. which is not a bad thing, but like Houdini has been a lot more, I think, uh, developed in that way uh, to create uh, uh, special effects for movies, for games, for whatever. Uh, and so, it will be, I believe, more robust when it comes to animation. Um, like you can see crazy animations, like really crazy animations. You have also Blender that runs really well with animations. When I see these people I follow on Instagram, they're using a Blender, Houdini, or a Cinema 4D as well. Uh, so these, these, uh, these 
softwares. It's, uh, I think, completely different the way you would build the animations. But um, yeah, certainly good, uh, good tools to, to have if you really want to do animations. Yeah, I agree absolutely that it's not the way that we usually use Grasshopper for doing animations, no, right? No, no. But that's what is very nice about your work. <laughs> Thank you. And the next question is from Leka Gaville, I think, that asks, uh, can we make such animation with the concept of Phanemon? Uh, are we making loop animation? Uh, so the, I don't know if you know Anemon. Uh, yes, I know. I know Anemon. Uh, okay. Great plugin, by the way. Um, it's a so. Can we make such animation with a with a um, basic? Uh, no, I would. I would say, like the um, we we could basically we yes we could yeah. sorry we, we could make animation with uh, Anemon uh, for sure. Actually, one that I've done. Let me show you here. I used Animon first to generate the geometry, and then uh, stay here. Yeah, exactly. I'm actually gonna just go to the next one. So here, all the geometries have been created with Animon before starting doing the animation. So I created this 2K geometry in um, Rhino, and then I used Animon to with a with a step go and, and create an animation that is smaller and that sits on this small platform so every time like there is too many of them there is like 10 of them we would only see two or three but there is actually 10 of them when you zoom rhino is struggling with the with the precision right but um so we can use animon but the fact that the animation is looped is not due to animon it's not because animon is a loop plugin, like a loop implementation in Grasshopper, that we are using it. When you do looped animation, the key concept that you have to keep in mind is that the first and the last frames have to be the same, basically. And all the objects that are moving have to be moving in the same direction with the same intensity. Uh, that's really the key. And then when you have these two first and last frames that are the same, you have to remove one of them, either the first or the last one, because you don't want to have two times the same frame in the animation, or you will have kind of a, a small stop as the animation goes. You will have a yeah, quick yeah. tip that I noticed like after my tense animation. <laughs> Thank you. We have, I think, two more questions. One from, mm -hmm. from Claudio Feldman that is asking if you have used Horster. Uh, oof, I remember seeing Horster when I, I was still uh, in uni, I was discovering Grasshopper and I was already questioned back then with animations. I looked after it, I saw Horster pregging and back then I didn't know much about Grasshopper at all. And so I don't, I don't know much about it. Um, I know the logo, I know some components in it, but I remember them, but I, don't really know how it works. I've never really used it. I think I've seen also another one uh, that is, seems to be a bit advanced. Um, I forgot the name. But on Food for Rhino, I think there is also a tag that you can set in the search bar. You can search for animations. Um, I think so, yeah. I will for me, yeah. For me, since it works like this, uh, I try again to... Use yes, there is a category the, for animation. Yeah. So I try to go with the vanilla components. And the, if really needed, I go with the plugins. So. Great. And we have another one from Imbar that yeah. is asking about the plugin for, for the camera. I think it's the Teroptera, that I think it's this one, yes. right? Uh, I don't know if that's that one. I uh, don't know why my message box has disappeared. Probably you have the chat at the bottom. There. Yes, it's that one, Etherptera. Yeah. Yep. There are a few uh, plugins that uh, have a camera, camera um, components. But uh, yeah, this one is for me. 
the one that I've used. So it's the, the component itself is called camera crane. I can show it here. If I can find it, not first try, second try. Utilities, and you have camera crane. So that's it. You have the camera position. It's a point, target, point, different lens. So yeah, you will have a more zoomed effect or not zoomed or really fish-eyed. Uh, you have the up vector, which is something that I find sometimes interesting. It means that you can basically tilt the camera like this if you have the vector that is in another direction than, than the Z. The type of projection or the view that you're using. And here, if you refresh it or not, just have a Boolean here. You can turn off and off, on and off. And you can also retrieve like some geometries that are interesting. For example, you can have also the plane of uh, that is in the camera. So if you want to build actually geometries from the, the direction of the camera, it becomes, makes it easier, let's say. Some. Great. And I think the last question is yes. from Harry that is asking, well, it's more a specific question. I don't know if you can read it. That is asking about uh, semi-transparent objects with uh, transparency or playing with, I don't know, if you, yeah, you say you're rendering Grasshopper directly or to play the materials or in Rhino? I think he, I, I think he meant, yeah, in Grasshopper, when you, uh, so when you export with a, with a PNG format, yeah, uh, I see also these kind of weird behaviors where sometimes the whites are transparent, but sometimes not. So I guess that I guess is the is the white is not really uh, white, so it doesn't it, it doesn't go transparent. But also when you have, um, as he said, like the basic uh, preview of Grasshopper of a geometry, uh, the red, mm -hmm. uh, this, for example, is semi-transparent. And, and so it can lead to some, to some problems. Um, what I tend to use when I do animations is JPEGs uh, to avoid this. I know it's maybe a less interesting uh, mm -hmm. format, but uh, I tend to use JPEGs. Uh, I feel like it keeps more what I see on screen uh, into the animation. Yeah, Yeah. if not, it's reading the background as transparent also, and it's changing yeah. everything. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, the, the transparency would be really difficult even like if it's a PNG, because you would have to tell that this should be also transparent but having still color above it it's i, but, I don't know how but you apply the materials in grasshopper directly right yes all the materials in grasshopper yeah yeah there is no retouch <laughs> after mm -hmm. no well that's right uh, a lot of people saying thanks thank you for showing this uh, thank think you for showing up <laughs> it's also really inspiring too and well, thank you all for joining us today. And thank you, Antoine, again. And uh, well, uh, I answered that many times, but the recording of the webinar will be available tomorrow, probably in our YouTube channel. And right now, if you want to check, we have a, a webinar already running about LandKit, that is a, a plugin of, that is available in Food for Rhino. So if you want to check it, you can go to, to our YouTube channel and check it right now. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Have a nice afternoon. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.